you. Good morning to everyone. Again, good morning. Good morning. All right. First of all, we would like to thank you for coming out here and spending this beautiful morning here with us. Uh, my name is Ixli Sochi Isela Salinas. I am from Mexico City, Mexico. And I'm here with part of the family to share with you a little bit of our traditions, a little bit of our dances. Also, I would like to ask you that during these dances to please not to run or walk across the circle. To us, the circle is very important, it's very sacred, it represents our family. And uh, once we begin our dancing, it is uh, us asking permission, uh, blessing the ground. So to us, it is very disrespectful to run across or walk across the circle. Uh, when you see us step into this arena and face the four points, that is what we call now we all in. Now we all in means four movements. It represents the four directions. This is asking permission to the four main elements that we need to survive, which is the fire, the earth, the wind, and the water. Followed by this is the ancient dance or the dance of the Washolo. This dance, it pays respect to our elders, our grandparents. You know, we come from Mexico and now, uh, of course, we do speak Spanish, but to us that is a second language. Our original language is called Nahuatl. The Nahuatl tongue, the Nahuatl language, is the mother language of a lot of dialects in central and northern Mexico and some of the tribes from the southwest of the U.S. These different dances that we're going to be sharing with you, they have been passed down in our families from generation to generation. If you ever get a chance to visit Mexico City, throughout the city, throughout the central region of Mexico, every weekend there are different festivities that take place in different committees. And uh, we dance for an average of seven hours of straight dancing. The thing about it though is that when we begin a festivity, we are not allowed to stop dancing until the festivity is finished with. And yet we are not allowed in a circle without dancing. When we do our festivities back home, of course, we don't dance for an audience, we don't use a microphone, but to us it's very important to share with you what is the meaning behind these dances. What is the purpose of them? One of them is to give thanks for everything that we have, for the air that we breathe, the water that we drink, for our families, for our health. Every one of these different dances has a different symbolism. And as we go through this program, I will explain to you the meaning of the following dances, about our clothing as well, and the instruments that we use. At this time, we're going to begin by opening our circle with the Nawi Olin, the four points, the four movements, followed by the ancient dance, or the dance of the Washolot.
At this time, I would like to call my father to the front, please. As you can see, our clothing is very elaborate, very bright, very colorful. Every design, every color, every feather is there with a symbolism. Each dancer must make their own clothing. The reason for this is that these are designs and colors according to that person. The day that we are born, family, and community that we belong to as well, as every time we make a new, a new piece of clothing, we do so putting colors and designs honoring a certain element or a certain deity. The style of clothing that my father is wearing is that of a warrior. This style of clothing we wear it for ceremonies and for festivities. Everything is handmade. The cape that he's wearing is made of sequins. Every one of these stitch one by one to form all the different intricate designs as well as his outfit and his shield made of glass seed beads also sewn one by one to form all these different designs. The colors of his outfit are representing the element of fire, but always maintaining a balance by adding colors and designs of an opposite element. And with that, he has colors honoring the element of water. On his shield, he has Quetzalcoatl, the feather serpent. I am sure that most of you at one time or another have seen the Aztec calendar. There are two serpents that meet at each end, which represents the continuous cycle of life which is creation and destruction. The feathers that he's carrying on his headdress, these are pheasant feathers and they represent the movement of the serpent. The seats around his ankles, these are called chachayotes, and they represent the sound of the rattlesnake. And it goes on to represent that serpent, that continuous cycle that is on the outline of the Aztec calendar, or as we call it, tonalamat, the stone of the sun. These also, these seats, they also provide for us a very important part to our dancing, which is the music, the rhythm. They serve as rattle for our feet, but they also have another purpose, which is that of medicine, to help us protect and heal against rheumatism and arthritis. He's also carrying one of the rattles. These are made of metal, which are more resistant to the traditional rattle, which is made of gourd. The next dance that he would like to share with you is the dance of the Toshli, or the dance of the rabbit, which is a dance usually danced by the oldest member of a circle. array of different dances. We have social dances, we also have ceremonial dances. There are dances to honor every member of a family from the youngest to the oldest. We have dances that honor our children. We have dances that honor women. We are the ones that keep our people alive, our families alive. There are dances that honor our warriors. They are the protectors of our families. And there are dances that honor our elders, such as the first dance that we had, the ancient dance. This next dance that we would like to share with you is a very easy dance and yet a very important dance. This is one of our social dances. 
It's a friendship dance. It is known as a friendship dance. It is also known as the dance of the sun. Please, we ask you, don't be shy. We have traveled a long way to be here with you today. And we do appreciate every one of you coming out here today to share this day with us, taking this interest in learning about the native people of the Americas. So what better way than to be able to take part in this circle, learn a little bit of Aztec dancing. These are very easy steps. We're going to show you how to do this. My father will be leading you in this dance. You know, even though that we are born and raised within these dance communities, we are never forced to take up the tradition of dancing. However, in the middle of the celebrations, we stop all the dancing. And also, we don't usually dance for an audience, we usually do gather an audience. But the middle of the celebrations, we stop all the dancing. And we invite in anyone who would like to participate, our children included. Myself, I remember as a young child also taking part in these friendship dances. It is a really good way to learn how to enjoy and respect the dance circle at the same time. As I mentioned to you, the circle represents our family. As you can see, my father, he's carrying a shield for dancing. You know, our people at one time was a warrior people. To this day, we still are warrior people. But we don't engage in battles against each other. To this day, our battles are to maintain our identity strong. Our shields that we carry during dancing, it represents our families. It's what protects us. It's what shields us. At times, we also carry what we call makawitu, which is a fighting staff. We carry those during dancing also. Those to us represent education. To us, these two are very essential elements to a family, to a society. I need everybody in our, in the circle. I need everybody, let's all hands. Let's form one complete circle. I need all our new dancers. Let's form one complete circle. During this friendship dance, all you have to do is follow the steps my father will be sharing with you. However, we have added a small part to this friendship dance. We're gonna ask for four volunteers. We need four volunteers with a lot of energy that are not shy at all, that had a good breakfast this morning. If you can't sit still in class, we're looking for you. Place your hand. My father will be picking out these volunteers. And uh, we're going to ask also, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have two teams. All right, I'm gonna ask for two teams. I'm gonna split the circle in half. Everybody on my left side, you guys are gonna be cheering the team on my left. Everybody on my right side is gonna be cheering the team on the right. All right, we're gonna have a small friendly competition. This is a dance competition. There is no right or wrong way to do this. They get to do any kind of dancing they like, as long as they follow the beat of the drum. They cannot stop dancing until the drum stops beating. My father will be giving them a small dance demonstration just to give them an idea of what, of what kind of dance moves they can do. After this demonstration, we will have each team share their dancing with us. You can do any kind of dancing just adapted to the beat of our drum. This is a demonstration, let's watch for now. you want you don't have to follow our exact same dance steps if you can do flips in the air hey go for it all right this is a competition you have to try to outdance the other team it's a friendly competition but a, a competition nonetheless okay this young man he's gonna give his team a, a name what is gonna be your team's name lightning spear lightning spear is gonna be on my right all right Everybody on my right side, you guys have to cheer really loud for Lightning Spear. Again, Lightning Spear, let's hear really loud. All right, this young lady is going to give a, a name to her team. Little Stars. Little Stars, beautiful name. Everybody on the left, let's hear really loud for Little Stars. All right, our first team is going to be Lightning Spear. Everybody, let's hear really loud. 
for them.
coming out here and taking part in this friendship dance with us. Energy makers! We would like to thank you for your uh, cooperation and also for your attendance today. As my sister was explaining to you, the place, the origin, where we come from, our heritage, a little bit of our purpose now in the present. Uh, I'd like to reinforce on a little bit. We come from uh, Central Mexico, as you already know us, uh, as Aztec. Um, there is a very big misconception in books that the Aztec is no longer existent when 90% of our population in Central Mexico is indigenous descendant. This is reflected in our color, um, our hair, different uh, forms of art that we still practice nowadays. Dancing itself, which is what we're presenting to you, is one form of art that is still preserved throughout the years. The symbolisms, the representations behind the regalia, behind the instruments, everything has a meaning. In ancient times, we did not have a, an alphabet. We would uh, record our history, our events, in a pictographic way of communication, very much as in Egypt. Uh, this led to many misconceptions as we worship many gods. We have always believed in one creator, but uh, throughout the years we have annexed the different elements into Catholicism. Catholicism was brought to our, our people in the 15th century. Today we are Catholic, but we still maintain many of our um, traditions, many of our forms of art alive. Dancing itself is one of them. And uh, we thank the park of Silver Springs for giving us the opportunity once again to bring this uh, small glimpse of our culture to all of you. And we would like to thank your schools as well for giving you the opportunity to witness this. Uh, there is uh, very few people that can witness the Aztec in, uh, in person. Uh, this is basically the ancient Aztec regalia as my sister was explaining to you. And at this time I would like to explain to you a little bit of the music, the instruments, the all percussion instruments, um, handmade out of natural resources. The main instrument is called the Wewet. Wewet in an uh, ancient Nahuatl language, uh, today we speak Spanish, but we also speak the uh, language of Nahuatl. It branches out into different dialects, and uh, some words can be found up until uh, uh, North America, as far as Central America. Um, Wewet in our language translates into voices or echoes of our grandparents. This is a, a drum, you know this as a drum in ancient times. We did not have a word for drum, we simply called it wewet. Um, this is carved out of uh, the awewete tree. Here you know it as a cypress. It's the strongest type of wood that we have in central Mexico. And it is carved in um, the external part. Um, after the show, you're welcome to come closer to it and uh, take a look at it. There is uh, carvings throughout it depicting uh, symbolisms or at times events to a particular family or to an entire group. Uh, this is a contemporary piece that has been with our family for approximately over 20 years now. Uh, some pieces could date before Christ and they're only found in museums in Mexico City or in Europe. Um, we also use the ayoto or the tudo shell. This is another ancient instrument and uh, my sister explained to you about the ayoyotes. A yoyote is a type of seed pot that grows in central Mexico. It is impossible for it to grow over here in uh, North America because of the cold winters. This is a very uh, warm climate um, seed pot. It's not eatable, it's toxic, but it's also medicinal um, and it uh, helps relieve the rheumatism or the arthritis. It has been uh, used by our people for centuries and today it's also used as an instrument, as a rattle for our feet, our anklets. And um, this, at uh, the end of our body, and since our culture is very symbolic, these rattles at the end of our body are supposed to make us uh, represent or resemble a rattlesnake, which is the animal that pierces Mother Earth, linking the person or the humans with Mother Earth, or the um, ancient mother um, also representing fertility. We also use the um, Ateco Coli. This instrument in ancient times was used to communicate from long distances or also to open up ceremonies. Uh, what we're presenting to you is not a ceremony, but a small glimpse of our ceremonies that still take place in Mexico City. Perhaps the biggest one is the one in December 12th in Mexico City. And uh, again, it's, uh, it's very, uh, you guys are very fortunate 
uh, for the park to bring these uh, small glimpses of these ceremonies what still take place in our ancient communities here in Silver Springs. Uh, next, we would like to present to you a very special dance, a very ancient dance. It represents and at the same time it gives thanks to the Creator for every uh, time cycle, for the ending and praying for the beginning of a time cycle. There is a ceremony every 52 years in Central Mexico uh, dedicated to the new fire and it's called the Ceremony of the Huehuetel. This is a dance representing this ceremony in what we are close to nature, honoring and uh, giving thanks for what we receive from them. This is a dance of the Shikot or the dance of the fire. Before we uh, actually start this dance, we would like to advise the young audience not to imitate this dance. It's a dance in which a dancer becomes in contact with the fire um, in body and mind. It, uh, it takes many years for the dancer to, to do this dance. And, um, it's, it is real fire, it, is, it does hurt us, um, but when we dance we create energy, positive energy. Um, I'm very sure you already have um, uh, touched the topic in school about negative and positive energy. Our bodies is composed of that, but um, people, when they get older, they are um, able to, um, to, to measure and, and, and use uh, mind and body and concentration along with the music itself. Um, to perform this dance. It's a very special dance and we advise you not to imitate it. Thank you.
at this time we would like to thank you for your attention, for your respect, for participating with us as well. You know, when you hear of Native Americans, what comes to mind is what we see on TV. You know, there is Native Americans from the tip of South America to the tip of North America. Mexico is part of North America. We represent one of over 385 recognized tribes, communities, and cultures within Mexico alone. Mexico City is part, also known as Mesoamerica, which is a cradle of great cultures such as the Mayan, the Toltec, the Olmec, the Zapotec, and the Aztec. We are very honored to have been invited out here. Once again, to us it's a responsibility to our families, to our previous generations, to continue learning these dances so that we are able to pass it on to our children. But also, every time that we travel to a new place, every time we share these dances with a new person, we are maintaining our culture alive. Because as you live here today, every one of you will take a small part of what you've seen take place in this circle. Perhaps something that was said, perhaps a part of a dance. But to us, each one of you will maintain our culture alive because each one of you will be able to later on say that you were here, that you've seen these Aztec dances. To us, it is uh, in a humble way that we are able to say we are very proud of the heritage that has been handed to us and it is also a great obligation because we are to continue doing these dances, we are to continue passing this on to our following generations. So on behalf of our family, we would like to thank every one of you in Silver Springs for having us out here once again. Our family will be back on at 12.15. We'll see you then. Thank you very much.